Adam, we have to kind of be like not dorky well, while she does this. We picked the two wrongest people then <laughs> to be not dorky. Didn't want to say anything, That's but... very true. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sick burn. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> yes, we'll be normal. Yeah. <laughs> dorky normal. Yeah. And then uh, just start whenever you're ready. Just whenever I'm ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're right here. Okay. Hi, I'm Amina Moreau, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Radius. And to me, Milwaukee is quickly becoming my second home. When we first launched in Milwaukee just a few weeks ago, I was like, this is a great place to do business. And then I went there and I was like, oh my goodness, this this place is just filled with friends. And uh, so, yeah, it's kind of a second home now. I love it. Nice. Right. It worked. That's a great kickoff to the show. I love it. Second home. Can I say welcome you now? Steve, I will allow you to say welcome now. Welcome to the show, Amina. <laughs> yes, welcome. So We're so happy to have you. Yeah. And in matching Adam, shirts, no less. Yeah, Adam, it's nice to see you too. I'm glad I could be here. I'm glad I could be here in my basement. I mean, my studio. <laughs> I'm in my studio. Yeah, you are. In my yeah. studio. You're in your studio. That sweet keyboard behind you. Let me ask you this before we get started. Oh, boy. Dost thou tickle the ivories? <laughs> So dust is a very appropriate word. <laughs> um, because let me just say, uh, hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. It's been a little bit since I've played it, admittedly. Well, that's okay. It looks cool. At the very what's your least. Favorite so what's your favorite cool. song to play? You know, I'm really terrible at reading music. Song names? Oh, yeah, that's okay. And I'm okay at learning songs by ear. So mm -hmm. when I was a kid, because I was kind of mediocre at all of that, I started just making things up on my own. So right now, the only songs I can play are my own. And even that is eh, shaky. <laughs> Beats by Amina. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, don't, don't ask me to play anything for... A few years. Just Got it. Okay. Time. I will I will hold off on my request for you to play Furry Lease. <laughs> God. Uh, yes. What is yes. that? It's da na 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 Nailed it. Okay, nailed so it. all right, hey, welcome to the show. <laughs> Let's get back hey, to that welcome. Frozen? Because you're you frozen. You are not frozen. All right. Well that's We're all frozen? that matters. You guys are totally frozen for me on no, you're to you're good. It you're might good. have you're just good. blipped for you. No bigs. Okay. Okay. You know what we like to do here? What do we like to do? We like to pretend no one's heard of Radius or Amina. That's what we like to do here. It's not true because you're super popular in Milwaukee. Yeah, I mean second home and all. Second home. And lots of friends. It Honest and honest and true. It's uh, I cannot believe how warm that welcome was when I came in. What was it, July, Steve? That I came. I think it was uh, June, July, somewhere around Summer there. Yeah. Summerfest was going on. Yeah, it was late July. It was. It no, was, it was Summerfest. Summerfest. Oh God! So, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It wasn't late July. <laughs> yeah. And it was, you know, I was excited to be landing there because it's our second city that we're launching in. And I got to finally meet you in person after like a year and a half of Zoom calls. Yeah. And I was yeah, so excited. Sure. And then and then I I just felt so welcomed. And it was like I was becoming part of a family. And that was not something I expected. So that was super cool. That's cool. So what mm -hmm. let's do this. Second city for Radius. What the heck is Radius? And how did you even get started yeah. doing Radius? Oh, boy. Okay. All right. So let me define it. Um, yeah. in, a, in, in about a week and a half, I'm doing an elevator pitch. It's a pitch competition where they stick you in an elevator and they have oh, you nice. pitch your startup in the amount of time it takes you to go from the first floor up to the very top. 32 seconds I have. I'm not going to spend 32 seconds giving you the definition of radius, but in a nutshell, 
basically we're kind of like Airbnb, but instead of overnight accommodations, we provide really great workspaces and meeting spaces that are right in people's neighborhoods. Because we take vacation rentals and we outfit them with workplace amenities. And then you can rent a space for a meeting on a Tuesday just for the day and not worry about like a whole 10 year lease sort of deal. So that's, that's pretty cool. That's it in the nutshell. I love that. And your second question was, how did it start? How did this whole thing come to be? Yeah. How did you get involved with launching this organization? You know, it was totally out of left field, I will say. Like, I don't have real estate background. I never thought that this was a field I would ever be in. But initially, the idea was just, it came out of a pain point from being an Airbnb house. So my partner and I, we have a little Airbnb space downstairs. Actually, it's right below the office, the home office that I'm in right now. And it covers about two thirds of our mortgage every month. And in the middle of the pandemic, we had to shut it down, of course. Mm -hmm. And even when we were allowed to reopen it again, we were like, we don't want to wash strangers linens during a pandemic. That sounds really gross and risky and scary. And so we just kept it closed. But we were also like, this is a lot of like potential revenue that we're losing out on as a family. So we can't, couldn't keep it closed indefinitely. So one day in mid 2020, it was like August ish. We were having brunch um, just in our kitchen. We're like, okay, we've got to get creative. What, what can we do? And we thought, well, if we could just eliminate laundry, then that would that would help a lot. So how do you do that? Well, you have to get rid of the overnight component of short-term rental, host, like vacation rental hosting in order to get rid of laundry. But when people vacation, they want to stay overnight. So then we were like, well, we've got all these neighbors. I remember, it was August 2020, so everyone was in lockdown. So you've got screaming kids and barking dogs and parents trying to juggle all these things and get their work done all at the same time. And we're like, what if we just rent that space out to our neighbors to go work in? Like we could put a, a desk down there, we could upgrade the Wi-Fi and just give people a way to escape these really tough work from home situations. And it was like gangbusters immediately. And then we started talking about that with our hosting friends and they were like, where do I sign? Because there are so many other pain points with vacation rentals that are eliminated when you get rid of the overnight side of things. Mm -hmm. And so we started coding. We're like, cause this could be a platform. And then in the fall of 2020, all these headlines started coming out about how companies were announcing permanent remote work policies and they were getting um i don't know they're putting into into play all of, all of these new ways of working and canceling leases and stuff and we're like wait a minute this is not just a little neighborhood platform this could potentially be a b2b opportunity and companies should like stop paying for seven day a week space when they only need you know when their employees only need it once or twice a week and so that's that's basically in a nutshell how the idea came to be. It's evolved a lot since that mid 2020 idea. And now, you know, we're approaching the end of 2022. So we've learned a ton and we've pivoted and changed. And that's what startup life is all about. And now we're in a second city in Milwaukee. So pretty excited. Cool. Adam are st and I are still in just Milwaukee. Yeah. We are. We don't, we don't have, have a second, second city. city. No, yeah. we should think about that. We're still working on that first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a quick question. Um, as I was listening to, I love, I love how. First of all, I love origin stories, and I love how mm -hmm. these things just come up. By we're hanging out at brunch. We're like, we've got to get creative. We've got. We have revenue sitting on the table. Who became your other than uh, your neighbors as it started to grow? Who started becoming your main customer, who, your main audience that you're talking to about stuff like this? Yeah. Right now, the people who book our spaces the most frequently are either companies who are looking for places to just meet with people. Companies, mm -hmm. especially those who recognize that offering employees flexibility is kind of a competitive advantage and that don't want to force people back to an HQ. Yeah. 
or they've just gotten ri- gotten rid of it, frankly, and they don't have an office anymore. Maybe they're like a smaller to mid-sized company and they just don't want to have a lease and they want to have that flexibility. But um, they book our spaces for these meetings over something like a coffee shop because you're not going to have the privacy or like the guaranteed Wi-Fi yeah. speeds and all of that stuff. And, uh, and, and same with things like co-working spaces, you, you know, you go there if you want to meet a bunch of other people that might work at other companies. Um, but you book one of our spaces where, when you want to like kind of stay in your neighborhood because they're all residential spaces. And when you want to have only the people that you invited there, so you can have a private conversation, um, or know that you're maybe a little bit safer from a flu perspective or from a COVID perspective, um, it's invite only. So company, yeah, but then you also have like just individual working professionals too. Like we've had therapists yeah. do therapy sessions with patients and accountants meeting with their clients. Again, it's kind of like, you know, if you want to do something that's not over zoom, then where are you going to go? Especially if you need to have that privacy. So it's been cool to see it evolve though. It's nice to see that the therapy sessions will be moving out of Starbucks. Like I'm just trying to get get in there, get a medium black coffee. I don't want to. I don't need to hear you, about it. You find yourself participating a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happened to me the other day. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of zoom bomb. You like squeak up a chair. This is zoom bomb. Uh, um. So you're located in Portland. I am. Second city in Milwaukee. Your your new favorite second city. <laughs> And um, what else has been going on with, you said you've learned a lot uh, over the past uh, couple of years. What's going on with new features, functions, search locations, hosts, all that stuff for people who might be listening from Milwaukee and wondering how do they kind of get, get on the platform? Yeah. You know, one of the biggest things that, that we learned was that, you know, going back to the origin story, initially it was just about getting individuals out of bad situations, right? So it was more about solitude because that's what was safest at the time. But one of the things that we learned as we talked to more and more companies is that their biggest priority is getting people together. And it wasn't about solitude. It's about how do we get people together in person on a regular or irregular basis so that we can continue to foster that culture in a way that, you know, you can on Zoom, but it's harder. Um, So one of the things that ended up changing over time is instead of sourcing smaller spaces for just one or two people, we started sourcing spaces that could, you know, accommodate five or 10 or 15, or our biggest space can accommodate 30 people. Um, And so that's one of the things that we learned along the way is that people really want to be together. Maybe that's not surprising. We're kind of social Mm -hmm. beings. Uh, but that was a really important lesson for us. And, you know, another thing, Steve, you were asking kind of like about searching. One of the things that we launched very, very recently is this, so we're calling it a concierge service, a little bit of of white glove treatment where just like with Airbnb, anybody can go on the platform and if they need a space for, you know, next Tuesday, just go through and use different search filters to find, different spaces with different amenities and sizes and capacities, et cetera. But not everybody wants to necessarily take the time to do that. And sometimes we have access to secret spaces that aren't yet fully launched on the platform, but are like about to be. And so we launched this concierge service so that people who are interested in space can just get in touch with us and say, look, I need a space for this day, for this number of people with these amenities. Like we need a projector because we're doing a slide presentation or we absolutely have to have ethernet because we're going to be uploading big files or something like that. Then uh, our team will do all the searching for them. And they just give us a couple days and we put together a really nice list that's really tailored to what they need. And we save them, save them all the search, searching time. And that's been really so great cool. because it's made people feel just a little bit more valued, a little bit more heard. We get to mm-hmm. learn more quickly uh, because as a startup, like learning is everything, right? So if we mm-hmm. can hear directly from potential customers what they care about, it's only going to make the platform and the experience better. And, uh, and then it, it also gives our hosts a little bit of a heads up that people are interested in their space and that we are actively suggesting their spaces 
to uh, to these potential customers. So uh, ever since we launched that concierge service, it's been it's been really exciting, and uh, we've had a lot of engagement through that. So it's been pretty cool. Adam, you need a concierge service. I was just thinking that too. Yeah, something to help me like hang out with people. Figure out what I'm gonna wear every yeah. day. Maybe find some friends. Um, maybe yeah. eh, we'll see. <laughs> um, that kind of spurred a question. Oh, and forgive me for wandering down a path, but do you think that there's going to be event spaces? that will want on to this platform to rent out during the week for parties, small get togethers, stuff like that. You know, I'm going to say maybe definitely maybe, yeah. uh, you know, it's something that we've been thinking a lot about what types of spaces do we really want to mm -hmm. offer? Because our specialty is taking homes, guest houses, apartments and outfitting them with these amenities for work and then renting them out per, per day. So our focus has been residential, but we have actually gotten a good number of requests from people for more corporate feeling spaces. Mm -hmm. And so now we're starting to add a little bit of that to our inventory to and to the search results page. And then we started getting some requests for, well, what, what if we have a bigger group or what if we want to do a networking or what if we want to have mm -hmm. a speaker and do a, like a panel? And we've, we've started thinking about that. And so maybe, and I keep coming back to maybe because it's I think tough. that as a startup, we need to be open-minded and we need to be flexible, but we also have to be very careful to not become unfocused. And there are some other platforms already that specialize in mm -hmm. events or they offer a lot of different very general purposes and so i think that one of our differentiators is going to be that we do this one thing really 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 well but we're keeping our minds open so ask me again in six months okay sounds good i actually i thought god if you've opened up to that I, you're an event planner now like that, that, that I don't, I don't, I'm trying to figure out where you're not at that. You know what I mean? Because as soon as you open up to that, then people yeah. want to like, Hey, what food do you have? What, what yep. can mm -hmm. I bring drink? And it just gets, it gets really messy after that, honestly, in my brain. So I wanted to see kind of where your head yeah. was at, um, with that. And interesting. If if I like the definitely thing, maybe though. Yeah. If there's one thing that I've learned in building this platform, and let me just also give give a shout out to my co-founders and, and the whole Radius team, because this has been yeah. such a team effort, um, is that not like not a single facet of building this company is simple. It is just <laughs> exactly what you just said about introducing events. You would think it would just be some bigger spaces. No, there are like a thousand other things yeah. that you would have to factor into that equation. And that is for everything there are like a thousand different things that you have to consider for every nook and cranny of this business and mm -hmm. it's a double-edged sword it's what makes it difficult but it's also what makes it really exciting because there's opportunity everywhere and that's yeah. why i'm kind of obsessed with it <laughs> kind of a little kind bit kind of obsessed yeah. definitely maybe definitely maybe <laughs> so, so speaking of your second city you are yourself literally but radius is going to participate in some of the milwaukee tech week uh activities that's coming up the week of october 3rd yep what what do you have going on yeah very excited about that i land on sunday the second in the evening uh fingers crossed for no flight delays because it seems like mm -hmm. that is the rule these days it's and just not the exception. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So on Monday the 3rd, we are hosting one of our what we call rad work days. And a rad work day is effectively a pop-up co-working day where we book one of our larger and, and kind of swankier spaces. And we invite the local business community to just come and co-work with us for the day. Totally for free. 
Uh, it's kind of a great way to get some work-life separation, check out a really beautiful radio space and kind of experience, experience that, um, but also get to hang out with cool folks from the community. Uh, some people come for an hour or two, some stay for the whole day, and uh, I don't know. It's just a really fun way to get people together. And oh, and there's going to be food. Can't forget that. There's going to be food. And I'll be there. You and said the magic frequently. words. Yeah. We'll send you the link, Adam. Yeah. What I like about, uh, so I, I participated in a past Rad Work Day here in Milwaukee. And it, yes, swanky, yes. Um, I don't know if it's one of those spaces you were talking about that can fit as that many, like 30, 40 people or more. But what was cool is there are all these little, like, there are some main areas for the whole team to get together, but there are all these little spaces to do some work on your own or have one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one or two-on-two -two conversations. Yeah. And then there were spaces around the house, uh, the space that uh, you could have a, a private phone call. Yep. Nice. Yep. Or a private I, meeting if you wanted to. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge if you're doing something like, like a pop-up pop co-working day, but it's also really important if you're doing like a team building day, you know, with mm -hmm. with a department at your company or the whole company, because uh, you're not going to be team building the entire day. And some people are going to have to ch check their emails or do a Zoom call. Um, yeah. But one thing that I do really love about these these types of spaces, especially those larger ones, like the one that, that we have booked for Monday on, on October 3rd, on the third, is yeah. that it has everything that you mentioned and it has outdoor space, you know? Ooh. And so Ooh, like you can, you can do open co-working in the main area, book the private office for a Zoom call, go outside and get some fresh air, do a coffee break. So, you know, not this particular space, but one of our other spaces has cornhole. And so like people start to play a little, <laughs> like feel a little playful, feel a little competitive. You can go out there. Although I will say that the team. space on Monday, it does have foosball and maybe Ooh. ping pong. I can't remember, but there's like a whole oh. games room. So That's gonna be cool. Steve, I yeah. challenge you. Fine, <laughs> let's do pong. it. Ping pong, yes. yeah. it's on. It's I call it fun. table tennis. Do you? No, you don't. No. I didn't think so. I was going, eh, you're not a table tennis guy. <laughs> That's awesome. And what else is, you've got a bunch of other stuff happening too, right? Right. That's right. Monday yeah. night, you're doing a private event. Yep. And then on Tuesday in the early evening, I think it starts at 5 or 5.30, um, there's a startup showcase. And so a bunch of startups that are either founded in Milwaukee or are now serving Milwaukee are, it's almost like a little mini trade show for our startups and investors and I think potential customers too, and just people who care about the local startup community. And so I'm mm -hmm. really excited to uh, meet fellow founders and catch up with some that I already know that I've been be becoming friends with over the last few weeks. And, uh, and then get to share a little bit about Radius as well. We're going to have a little booth there. So that should be pretty fun. But then the, the, the rest of Tuesday, um, I may actually be participating in a panel about the future of work. The timing of that is still TBD. But I am also just really excited to attend the other events at Tech Week because there are some really good ones. Yes. And all of what you said and more is at mketech.org for people who want to go and figure out and jump in, yeah, go meet get you, meet Radius, yeah, Always celebrate cool. tech. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, I think the Rad Workday sign up link is the very first one on the on the MKE Tech uh, Tech Week registration like events page. So yeah, yeah. If you want to come to the Rad Workday on Monday, October third, sign up sign up there be there yeah be on there it. adam will you can watch adam lose in ping pong oh, lose to on. me maybe i'm i'm rusty Ooh. And I still feel wait what, yeah, I, wait, what uh, did i miss uh, amina what'd you say uh, amina's <laughs> a uh, amina is a wicked wickedly great tennis player oh nice so she'll but, destroy you, know, with, you on ping pong probably with real tennis with real tennis you're standing on the table right so uh table tennis we'll see we'll see you might have a chance you might have i a call chance. doubles if, and i if you have I a call good doubles. forehand and backhand yeah you'll figure yeah. it out real quick yeah 
Yeah, I call doubles. I got Amina. You pick oh, anyone. Okay, cool. I'll just yeah. I I'll take one of the ghosts. <laughs> Great. Yeah, there's lots going to be lots of people there. Um, <laughs> all right, all those events, all those things happening in Tech Week. Other than that, how do people stay in touch with Radius? Uh, more importantly, how do they go and reserve a space for themselves or their company or their group? Yeah. Uh, so first of all, the website where you can browse spaces and, and book one is radius.pro, which is, uh, I'm not sure if you're going to have show notes, but I'll spell it out. It's yes. R-A-D-I-O-U-S dot P-R-O. And, uh, and you just select Milwaukee and your dates and number of people, et cetera and it'll pull up some great spaces uh, or use our concierge service and we'll be happy you do to help nothing. you out. Yeah. Um, but also stay connected to me personally. I, I would love to, to make new connections in Milwaukee and learn more about how other people are thinking about the future of work and the future of office space and the future of vacation rentals and all of that good stuff. So I am on LinkedIn like all the time. <laughs> so <laughs> find me on LinkedIn and we'll connect and we'll have a good chat. Cool. Beautiful. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for joining for us on video. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. This yeah. was cool. Yeah. 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 It was super fun. Adam. Hey, Steve. You know how we end it. And now, Milwaukee's own. No oh boy. Black Belt Theater. <laughs>